Okay, that was weird. Okay. I'm creating you alone. Born with the price of not my life. All right, good morning. Thank you guys for being here this morning. Let me get the live feed on again. <laughs> for some reason, I just decided to turn it off. I know we have folks that join us on Facebook Live, so it's good uh, that we have Cinda and one of the clutter and looks like Cosette um, joining us via Zoom. And this is i check and see which one it is. 20th Sunday of, uh, of, uh, of Pentecost. It just doesn't seem possible that it's been, it just seems zooming through. So a couple of things I need to show you. Um, you will see that this is pink. And today during the pastoral prayer, before we begin, I will actually give you a prayer that we will pray. Traditionally, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, and since coming to the Valley, I have discovered that breast, can breast, can bleh, breast cancer is not the only thing that we have here, but we have several different types of cancers. So I've adapted that prayer to not only talk about breast cancer, but for all others. And so you don't have to, but part of what uh, I would hope you would do is when we uh, join 
together for that pastoral prayer, I'm going to ask those that have had cancer, still have cancer, or have had family with cancer to stand during that prayer. I know it will be a long prayer, so if you want to sit down at, you know, after we've said it together, but I think you just need to see the impact of what cancer has in our community. And it's, I find a lot of people don't want to talk about it here. So, uh, but it gives us pause, pause to think and, and consider because there's reasons for it. <laughs> and we need to consider those reasons. Looks like we're having internet issues again. So, hey, wow. Cinda, Linda, and, and Cosette, Facebook is timing out and timing back in. So, hopefully, we'll be able to begin and have no problems. If you were not here last night, you missed a blessing. And somebody said, well, why did you have that happen last night? I did that because I knew everybody would not come yesterday morning, which was also a wonderful blessing. And it was as if God had planned it specifically for us with a rainbow and uh, the rain. I mean, it was like everything was perfect. And literally, I'm sure every beautiful aspen leaf is on the ground by this morning because the winds came in the afternoon and it was just perfect it was like god said oh they're coming to my house i want to make sure everything is perfect and uh but i knew everybody couldn't come to that and i i wanted to make sure that you got to hear jeff have the opportunity to hear him um he's an amazing amazing musician very modest um very talented, and I, I so appreciate the fact that he wanted to come and uh, share his talent with us. And the church that he, I kind of misunderstood the first time we talked, the church that he grew up in in Akron, he says, is the exact replica of this church. Not, not every stained glass window, but he said even the stained glass window up there, it's not the exact one, but it's a similar one. So um, I just think that was a God thing. <laughs> I just think that was something God wanted us to experience yesterday. And Vicki and Roy got to enjoy uh, catching up with family, and some of you got to get got to reconnect with Vizoma and. Um, because she's from this area. So our um, birthday tomorrow is Janet Myers. So she, I don't think she's gonna tell us how many, but we're gonna say happy birthday for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you and many more. So have a wonderful birthday, Janet. And Pam Mullenkow is also on Janet's birthday. Wayne Phillips' birthday is on Janet's birthday. Um, Janet Byers is on the 12th. Uh, Joe and Mary Etta Duras have uh, an anniversary on the 14th. Will Hall's birthday is on the 17th. Um, our coffee shop is open. We're not booming with business, but that's okay. It's open for people to come in as they need to come in. Um, we are getting a few donations, which is awesome. And I enjoy talking with everyone who comes in. So it's, it's awesome. So stop by. Um, yoga, I promise I will not get three shots. <laughs> so yoga will take place this Friday. Um, I, yeah, I, I didn't learn too well. <laughs> Team night is uh, is uh, Friday night, and coffee with the chief is at noon instead of um, in the morning on Saturday. He did that because he has a lot to share. So if you want to find out what's going on with the city police and all the lights you've been seeing, and he even tells us a lot about uh, other stuff. But uh, please come. And he would love to have you be there. So he can uh, listen to your concerns and your concerns. 
and so come. Um, on the 21st, our movie is Adam's Family 2. So, um, and it is funny. Um, and I don't know, I grew up with Adam's Family and I, the, when, you know, there were people in them <laughs> instead of animation, but it, it's, it's fun. All right, our Mountain Sky Conference. Um, actually, before the Mountain Sky Conference is clergy orders. And that's online. The Mountain Sky Conference is online. So just if you need me, text me if you want to hear any of the services or be present for any of the voting or any of that, let me know. And as soon as I have the agenda, which was supposed to have been published last week, I will let you know as well. Um, they're having to vacillate from one thing to another because um, I don't know if you've uh, heard or seen uh, several bishops died. Um, many clergy have died. Um, so it, it's rough. It's really rough. Okay, are there any other announcements that I may have missed? Again, thank you so much for coming yesterday. Those of you that came, I hope it was a blessing whether you came last night or yesterday morning or both. Let us stand and sing our song prelude. We have 405. Join me in the call to worship. God has called all God's people to lives of hope and service. We, we want, want to serve, serve God, but sometimes life gets too difficult for us. us. They should trust in God's power and love. God understands our needs, our sorrows, and our joys. Come, let us worship God, who is with us always. Praise God for God's eternal presence. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Sanctuary is 2163. <laughs>
catch one of the composers of that is Randy Scrubs. Will you pray with me? Merciful God, as we become so enamored of the glitz and glitter of this world, it is because of our lives and women in the of shocking design. We have so much and want so much more. We listen to the pictures and media about our greatest and best of everything. And rather than starting to serve you more faithfully, we strive to have more and more possessions. Forgive our past materialism. Break the bonds and chains of our oppression and slave to freedom. Open our hearts to know that the riches of the kingdom are great right service to you. Call us to understand the call you have given us to serve, and having heard and understood that call, may we be about the work of the kingdom, for we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to these words of assurance. Jesus understands our cries and our weakness. He forgives and heals our souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are healed and transformed. We come to a time of prayer, and there's so much that has happened. Uh, we do rejoice in the fact that we have we have have, have had a fairly successful harvest, but the exception to that is there was a very serious accident this past week. And though we do not know the names of the drivers and those involved, we do lift them up today in prayer. They all survived. Yes, they all survived. And the EMT told me by a miracle there were no really serious injuries. A broken leg was the most serious. Oh, awesome. They should look like they should have been. Okay. Awesome. That is a praise report right there. Yes. Absolutely. We thought we had gotten through the whole season without any tragedy, and, and thankfully we have. <laughs> but at the same time, no one no one is happy about it. Uh, guardian angels working over them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. God's having to have some in the in the heavenly ICU. <laughs> All right. Are there other um, other prayer requests? Besides our travelers that are going back. Mm -hmm. About the time I was ready to take Gordon Lynch and my sister Monica to Liz, he still, he went to the bathroom while she was walking the dog. He went to the bathroom and fell into the, or over the edge of the bathtub. When she got home, his lips were blue. Um, and uh, so they have to make some decisions. Um, you know, I said, well, maybe it like, or I don't know what to help, I don't know how to help you, but um, he's just, they're just struggling. Yes. So, Gordon Lynch will remain on our prayer list, but for a new thing this time. I have a prayer request for Robin Rice's brother. Okay. Rick Stewart. Rick Stewart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any others? Um, Christina Ratzliff is still cooking, so um, they, she will be in the hospital in Colorado Springs for at least two, two to four more weeks um, until she reaches 36 weeks for the babies to live. Okay. That's good news, too. All right. Let us go to God in an attitude of prayer. And as I give you these very bright pink things, I'm going to ask that, uh, uh, that would be awesome. I would ask you to stand, first of all, if you've had any bouts with cancer yourself. Cancer. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I 
These wooden roses that I am giving you, they are wooden roses. Yeah, you're going to have to stand up. And if you have never had a wooden rose before, they're very fragile. And that is exactly the way people who have had cancer are. And so as you hold that rose and you join me in the prayer that we will pray, know that those that are still living every day with cancer, um, even though they may be clear, they never say you're cured. <laughs> they say you are in remission. And so, um, that that's something in their life they will always, always have to have. And if you are family or friend of someone that is dealing with cancer, know that you, just as fragile as this rose is, that's how they are. And so you need to be there and you need to give them support. And sometimes just you have to listen to God as God leads you to be there for them. So he will join me. Father, for the strength you have given me, I thank you. For the help you have blessed me with, I thank you. For the women who are going through breast cancer, we lift up. Uh, we lift up my, the other Mike that's at Swatch, who is facing back surgery. Lord, we lift up Mike Spearman who will have a procedure done. We lift up many, Lord, who are facing health issues. We lift up Robin's request, Lord, for her brother, um, Stuart. Rick Stewart. Rick Stewart, thank you. Lord, there are so many. We thank you, though, and give you praise for the fact that the drivers of the that accident made it out with minor injuries or no injuries. We lift up our local community, Lord. Having finished or finishing harvest and beginning the next phase in this valley. But schools are closing because of COVID teachers and staff and medical personnel are weighed down because of COVID. And so Lord, we come to you continually asking for wisdom and grace and healing. We thank you. We were able to visit with Dave and his son this week and see that Dave is doing better, but Jeannie is not. And Lord, we lift her up. We've lost, we've lost folks to COVID. My Greg, Lord, our hearts ache and break for that. So be with our, our community, be with our nation, be with the world as we struggle to move forward day by day in different ways than we ever want. We ask that you would be with the military and our police, our first responders, our doctors, our nurses, and especially our firefighters. Give them strength. Help them to be able to do the work is, that is so needed now. We ask that you'd be with anyone who is suffering or has any trouble, any kind of trouble, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional. Be with unspoken requests that are within our hearts. Be with those that are victims of violence, Lord. And we also ask that you would be with those that see violence as their only source of response. Be with Ray and Bob and Bobby Abbott, Ed Aragon, Aunt Juju, Levon, Caton, Justin and Katie Clark and their newborn sons, Linda Clutter, Joanne Clutter, Jackson Colliam, Dora Mae Crawford, and her great granddaughter, Jean Davis, Barbara Donahue, Marilyn Eagles, 
the Fallon family, Isabel Geibel, Mike Gingrich, Bonnie Gilligan, Doris Golden, Bill Hazard, Lita Haney, Jean and Dave Lewis, Jeannie and Dave Lewis, Marvine Lovato, Gordon Lewis, Dick McNitt, Judy Medina Baca, Joanne Milligan, Vicki Miller, Crystal Miller's mother, Linda Mix's friend Yvonne, Vicki and Gerald Myers, Janet Myers as she heals, Roxanne Perry, Wayne Phillips, Amy Price, Trina Lovato Kuala, Vicki Radstead, and Vicki's request for unspoken request for writing. Matt and Christina Ratzliff as they await the arrival of the newborn. Jolene Robinson, Zach Sigler, Lori Sanchez's sister, Charlene Schaefer, Kenny Smith, Mike Spearman, Anne Tudor, who still is suffering with shingles, Alice Wardlow, Lois Willis, Linda and Dick Wilson, Everett and Sharon Windhurst. Lord, hear our prayers and be with those that have lost loved ones. The family of Daryl Acey, Ethel Dixon, the family of Cheyenne Goings, the family and friends of Bob Meeks, Mary Morfitt, Bill Nye, Mary Pachinko, Greg Peterson, and the family and friends of Sarah Payne. Lord, hear our prayers as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Today's Old Testament reading comes to us from Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. It won't be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant with me, even though I was their husband, declares the Lord. No. This is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my instructions within them and engrave them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. They will no longer need to teach each other to say, know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will, give, I will forgive their wrongdoing and never again remember their sins. Our epistle comes from James 4, 13 through 17. Pay attention, you can say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town. We will stay there a year, buying and selling, making a profit. You don't really know about tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appeared only for a short time, while for a short while before it vanishes. Here's what you ought to say. If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. But now we boast and pray, and all such boasting is evil. It is a sin when someone knows the right thing to do and doesn't do it. Please stand this for the gospel. Thank you. <laughs> Today we uh, read from Luke 6, 30 to 45. Give to everyone who asks, and don't demand your things back from those who take them. Treat people in the same way that you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, why should you be commended? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, why should you be commended? Even sinners do that. If you tend to, if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, why should you be commended? 
even sinners and the sinners expecting to be paid back in full. Instead, love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. If you do, you will have a great reward. You will be acting the way the children of the Most High act, for he is kind to you. Ungrateful and wicked people, be compassionate just as your father is compassionate. Don't judge and you won't be judged. Don't condemn and you won't be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good portion, packed down, firmly shaken, and overflowing will fall into your lap. The portion you give will determine the portion you receive in return. Jesus also told them a riddle. A blind person can't lead another blind person, right? Won't they both fall into a ditch? Disciples aren't greater than their teacher, but whoever is fully prepared will be like their teacher. Why do you see the splinter in your brother's or sister's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? How can you say to your brother or sister, brother or sister, let me take the splinter out of your eye, if you don't see the log in your own eye? See yourselves. First, take the log out of your eye. And then you will see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's or sister's eye. A good tree doesn't produce bad fruit, nor does a bad tree produce good fruit. Each tree is known by its own fruit. People don't gather figs from thorny plants, nor do they pick grapes from prickly bushes. A good person produces good from the good treasury of the inner self, while an evil person produces evil from the evil treasury of the inner self. The inner self overflows with words that are spoken. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So as we come to the sixth sermon on the treasure principle, we're almost finished. So before you say, oh no, not again, I don't want to do this. <laughs> If you're saying that, then God is getting to your heart. <laughs> That's all I can say. The scriptures say it all. They need very little explanation. It's very clear. But we'd rather choose not to pay attention to those scriptures. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we come to you this morning asking that even though this is number six of this book that some of us love and some of us are not happy with, I pray that you would open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to the message you have for us today. And Lord, I pray that whatever I seek to speak or say or show or demonstrate, would be to your glory and your glory only. In Jesus' blessed name. Amen. In all that switching back and forth, we have the camera now is working when I did when I didn't need it to work, but that's okay. All right, the treasure principle. And just as with the other ones, there's a brief video that goes with this. And they say it a lot better than I can. Uh, I want to look at the church and wonder as the offering place went by how many times God says, You're lying, you're lying, you're lying. Only 3% of each other the Christians even tied, and I think one of them were a lot. So I say to any Christian brother that's not it, that you're missing one of the greatest aspects of walking with Jesus Christ that you're going to experience in life is to finally get sound out of the way. And be able to exalt him to others through the kingdom. As a young man, I started early in the foolish business, and everything was going so well for me. And then all of a sudden, things happened. And uh, I was going to the office with Richard. Now I was talking to I think he always cracked up. Losses coming into their office, no money. Instead of things getting better, it started worse. Uh, my business went down. So Yeah, and I'm wondering, we did a lot of clients because of our business that we lost. We worked two years of, of us together, 
I lost everything. Everything that 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 I had worked for, the people I had worked for, everything was gone. Then one day I went to church and I heard about tithing. Then my husband, um, you know, has his big checkbook and wanted me to buy a I took the challenge. Uh, I, I gave money uh, to the church without even having them. And so uh, I had a hard time dealing with tithing at church because I thought that everything that I earned from my giving. And there was a big challenge in the book of Malachi 3 8. The, the challenge was that uh, that he would remove the flesh. That was what the word of God said. And, and, and he would. Make, he would pour out a blessing that I have the best to, 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 to receive. And I said, Well, you know, in my life, I've tried everything else, and everything else is better. I'm going to try to die. And I can honestly tell you that we gave the check with no money in the bank. Uh, the Lord knows what happened. And ever since then, it was never lacking things. God has blessed us, multiplied abundantly. Now that you see me, I have $2,300,000. Uh, and also going to also uh, make, make it for the outstanding corporations in the Philippines, not only the nation, but the state, but also uh, the So, two of the things that I hope you got out of this is the fact that the tide is not. The tide is the floor. And you notice that I chose the epistle that talks about the covenant. Because you have a lot of people today that say, we aren't under the tithe anymore. We're not under the old covenant. So we don't have to follow the old covenant rules. Remember, Jesus didn't come to demolish the Old Testament rules. He came to fulfill them. He came to give us a living example of what to do and how to live. Even in the day of the time, there was also something called a free will offering. And you see over and over again how it has blessed the lives of people that couldn't pay, repay, couldn't do anything. So it was given free. That's part of the idea of a free will offering. And you also hear what the first gentleman said. In Malachi, God condemns the people by telling them they're robbing him. Now this is just Debbie's theology or whatever, but sometimes I wonder if all the gross and horrible things that are going on today <clears throat> is not a consequence of our unwillingness to give. You come to the coffee, talk to Dale and find out what they find out from dealing with criminals. What motivates them to have turned to crime instead of work in a field or whatever it is that we think would be a better way of doing it. And I'm not saying, you know, that's right or wrong. I'm just saying, I wonder if God's people were generous like the early church. And even like churches we, have, we know of today. Adam Hamilton's church every Christmas makes a commitment to do, a, and I forgot what they call it, but it, it is a gift at the end of, of the uh, church year or the, the calendar year. And it's not to pay the bills of the church. It's benevolent. And every year they need it and go beyond. And part of it, and the reason I'm challenging you and anyone listening to me at least do the tithe if you don't give on a regular basis above and beyond the tithe. 
Now, at a previous church, and I shared this with Charlene, I really had issues with it, but I wasn't in charge. And so I, but I watched it not bear any fruit either. They would give a tile of giving and they would give you X amount of dollars and this is 1% of it and this is 2% and so forth. And you were encouraged if you never gave on a regular basis to, to find your salary and then either move over to 1% or 2% to try it and, and push it for further. But I agree with Randy Alcorn. I didn't see a lot of fruit come from that. We may have gotten some uh, offerings in during the next month or so, but after a while, it dropped back again. There's something about giving 10% of your income, and you realize what income means. And you can debate whether it's before or after taxes or whatever, you and God figure that one out. But if you think about it, could you live with 10% less of your salary? I think most of us would say, yeah. It wouldn't be easy. And it might pinch a bit. You know what happens? And I shared my stories. God brings it to you in much more than you ever thought. You heard the last gentleman. He lost his produce business. And yet when he made the faithful saying, I have zero God, but I'm giving you $50. And I'm trusting that you're going to make it work. And here he has one of the top produce businesses in the country now. And that money that has come in has proven to him over and over again that the 10% is only the basement. It is not the ceiling. And I would ask you to, <clears throat> next time you hear about politicians and, and elections and things, look at the people who are giving and supporting that candidate. What kind of people are they? Are they the folks that you really don't hear too much about unless they pass away and you find out that they've given 90% of their salary away and lived on the other 5%? And granted, they are really rich. And to us, that's really easy, right? But if we're not faithful in small, then we won't be faithful in big. And that's what I found with that sliding scale percentage. Those that were willing to go the 10%, something happens when you, you go, okay, God, there's no way. There's more month than there is paycheck. There's just no way. This 10% is going to go to God, going to go to the church. I'm just going to go ahead and give it. And here it is. And I don't know how I'm going to pay the insurance bill and blah, blah, blah. And before those are due, God provides. Now, most of the time, it's not like here, it just drops in your lap. I've had that happen <laughs> where it just dropped in my lap. And, I'm like, and I shared that one with you. <clears throat> but there's also been those times where I do have to do the work. But God provides. He provides for my needs. He doesn't necessarily provide for your wants. He wants our desires to be his desires. So what have we learned? You can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead. Those principles, and I'm going to go through all six keys, because we now have all of them. God owns everything. You're his money manager. Now, I want you to think for a moment. If you have a financial planner or a money manager, and you die, would you want that money manager to give what you have? 
to his kids? You hear what I'm saying? I know I'm meddling because I've had to deal with this in my own family, in my own life. It's not easy to say that because you want to help your kids. And it doesn't, I don't think God doesn't want you to help your kids. But there's an idea of how much you need to provide for them. Well, I'm not going to leave it all to my kids and they'll know. <clears throat> and they can figure it out. Well, you're doing a couple of things there. You're not growing your wealth eternally. And you're, I'm just going to tell you, your kids are going to have issues when you're gone. Yeah, you won't be there to hear them, but your kids are going to have issues. Even the best kids. Number two, my heart always goes where I put God's money. I would say the decline in, in church attendance and church participation is because people's hearts aren't there anymore. Maybe it's because they haven't really invested in that. Number three, heaven, the new earth, is the present one. That's my home. We are citizens of a better country. A heavenly one. And I said this last week. If you're not happy with what's going on in America today, you're not the only one. But that's not your eternal home. You can do what you can here, but it shouldn't consume your life to forget about what's through the veil. Key four. I should live... Today, not only for, not for the dot, but for the line. And that's where I told you if you put your pen or, or pencil on paper and you just put a little dot there, that's your time on this earth. Just like the scripture said, it's a mist. That's all it is. But you draw that line out, that's eternity. Key number five, <clears throat> giving is the only antidote to materialism. You do know that the reason, the huge reason that we are hated among especially third world countries, especially among Middle Eastern countries, is because of our wealth and materialism. And before we criticize them and say they've gone too far to attack our banking building on 9-11 and all these other things, if you look a little bit closer, you might want to hold your tongue. We're not wonderful people here. We're sinners like anybody else. And I know some of you may not appreciate me saying this, <clears throat> but America as much as we want to say it was founded on the freedom to worship God however you want. If that absolutely was the core of why we came to America, then why did we rape and rob people we didn't know? And sometimes it was done knowing, and sometimes it was done by our innocence. We had no idea that we were going to wipe out, literally, society of Native Americans with smallpox. <clears throat> Yet the soldiers who delivered blankets with smallpox on them to tribes, we knew that, and we did it. Our history is not something to be shied away from. It's something for us to learn from. And it should prove to us we can do so much better. We now live in the new covenant. And God forbid us ha ever having to do this kind of thing again. But we see it happening over and over. And that's why United Methodists are so concerned with social justice issues. 
You know, John Wesley said that as soon as he got any money at all, he got rid of it as soon as he could because he didn't want it, the greed to come out and enter his heart. And here's a man for his day and time who wrote tons and tons of booklets and pamphlets that were published and made him very much, made him lots, yet all of it was given away and reinvested in ministries. It wasn't his ministries, it was other ministries. He was good friends with the founder of uh, Salvation Army. He was good friends with many who were working to help the poor. And when he died, he died pretty much penniless, and that's what he wanted. <clears throat> to the point where he and Charles even had some discussions about this, because Charles had some beautiful kids that were musicians, some of them, and he wanted to make sure that they were provided for. So even, even John Wesley and Charles had discussions over this very thing. Learning to give. So the, do we do the tithe or the free will giving? Well, I would just simply say if you are not a giver, that you give occasionally and you really have no rhyme or reason when you give, oh, my heart was warmed or whatever. And that's fine. That's if that's how you want to give. I would suggest that instead of just having your heart warmed, you start with the 10%. Start with, with what was required in the Old Testament. Remember, you have bills to pay. And we probably have the best boss in the entire world he is not one of those that's going to be, you, you can't spend this, you can't do this. No. God loves you, understands you, and we have scripture that talks. He knows your sorrows. He knows your pains. He knows what you're going to have to go through. So he's not asking you to be so tight with the penny that you won't even release it. And he understands that. But even back as far as Cain and Abel, what did God require? First fruits. So I would simply ask those of you who are givers, are you giving of the top? Are you giving from the first? But what about the kids? Your kids need to be considered, yes, but also understand that you can literally cripple them and their own financial future and health by giving them more than they need. Not intentionally. I'm sure many people don't intend that. But it happens. It's human nature. It is exactly what happens. And the interesting thing about it is it may not be your kid. Your kid may be right on target, but that kid's usually married. And it's usually family. What is most important in the life of your kids? And this is the hard question. And for many of us, because we expect certain results, we hope for certain results, we have to give that to God. But have you put the work in making sure they had the background to know God, to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, to have their hearts strangely warmed? Because let me tell you, if they have, then they're going to turn to you and they're going to basically say, that money would be better used in service of this. Rather than sitting in there and planning, oh, gee, maybe we could buy that, that boat we've always wanted. The kids are thinking materialistically, they're going through the same struggles you're going through. They are. 
So it means you have a lot, little more teaching and a little more praying to do in their lives. Just because they turn 21 or 18 doesn't mean it's all over. I will tell you, your kids are your kids for the entire life, right, Lou? Right, Mary? But you can't bail them out of every struggle that comes along. Those are lessons they have to learn from. And you're not going to let your kids starve, obviously. I understand that. Your grandkids, too. Man, those tug, really tug at their hearts. But think about what you do. Having long-lasting and eternal results. Giving after I die. Well, I've put some of my, my will in either foundation or uh, giving to certain causes. And, and that's great. Don't, I'm not telling you that's not, not, not to do that. I don't want to misinterpret that. But what I'm saying is if you're doing that instead of giving to the church while you are alive, you're missing out on everything. Number one, you're taking a risk with that money that wherever it's being invested is used like you want it to. Now, I don't know how many of you about 20 years ago when they published that list of charities and they talked about the overhead or the administration of those charities and many of us were writing checks to those charities that we went, oh! So if you know something that needs to be given to, I would suggest that you do it now where you can make sure it goes to where you want it to go. If you're dead, you have no choice in that. And if you put off giving, what ends up happening is you usually don't give. But well, I'll wait till the end of the year. I'll wait to see how my taxes work out or whatever the case may be. That's putting the cart before the horse. And can a cart move very well that way? No. It, it can move, but it just doesn't move very well. And the last key of the treasure is God prospers me not to raise my standard of living, but to raise my standard of giving. Yeah, God wants you to prosper. So that the more you have, you, the more you have to give. He doesn't like you having to say, okay, I'm writing this $50 check, and it's probably going to bounce. He doesn't want you to have to live that way. He'd rather you get that paycheck and go, oh, yeah, I can raise my giving. I got a raise. Two ending scriptures as we close. Just as you excel in everything, in faith and speech and knowledge and complete earnestness and in your love for us, see that you excel in this grace of giving. None of you, none of you would expect to pack up a box for FedEx or some UPS or whatever and have the driver come up and get the package and then go home and open that box and decide whether maybe he wanted or she wanted that instead of where it was supposed to go. We call that what? Theft. Think about that. God has wrapped the package and you're the FedEx or UPS driver. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in the thanksgiving to God. And just as the other scripture talks about, don't judge, you won't be judged. Don't condemn, you won't be condemned. Don't give, and it won't be given to you. We come to this time to 
to join for an invitation to offer. Generous God, in abundance, you give us things both spiritual and physical. Help us to hold lightly the fading things of this earth and grasp tightly the lasting things of your kingdom, so that we are and do and say may be the gifts to you through Christ, who beckons all who seek the things above, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Amen. We left this open in case Jeff is going to be here this morning. I wasn't one wanting to demand that he come, but uh, I do want to share with you these beautiful, beautiful pictures and items that the retreat folks went on a prayer walk. And these were items that spoke to them and help them recognize their spiritual gifts. So I would encourage you to come and look at them and enjoy them. Some had to be left there because they were too big, like stone and so forth. But anyway, let us let us stand.
guided by God's hand. And I'd like to again welcome those by Zoom and also now those on Facebook, Ricky Drum, uh, Sandra Marquez, and Steve Warhol. Thank you so much for being with us as we close with the second verse of God be with you till we meet again. Yes, I'm still here.